Well, we would like to welcome you to our Good Friday service. Tonight is the end of Passion Week. The word passion, in this sense, refers to the Latin meaning to suffer or to endure. So in light of this meaning, we may also call this week the week of suffering. It is the week in which Jesus Christ suffered for us. Meaning that if we believe, we will have eternal life in heaven with him. This week began on Palm Sunday and ends with the crucifixion, crucifixion and burial of Jesus. Tonight, we will walk through the, through the Passion Week, or the week of suffering. We begin by singing about God's love for us. For it was by God's love that he sent Jesus into the world to suffer and die such a horrible death. So that we would not suffer the consequences of our sins and instead receive eternal life.
Palm Sunday was the day Jesus first marched into Jerusalem. The Jewish people had put palm branches before Jesus, expecting an earthly, militant king. Instead, Jesus was a heavenly, spiritual king. On Monday, Jesus and his followers came to a fig tree that was not bearing fruit. Jesus cursed the tree and said it would not bear fruit ever again. Immediately, the tree withered. Later, Jesus compared the death of the tree to the great things that can be accomplished through faith. Mark 11 says, Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you standing stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Later in the day, Jesus and his disciples went to the temple area and found something disturbing. Vendors were selling their goods inside the temple. Matthew 21 says, Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The next day on Tuesday, the Sanhedrin, the authorities of the temple and the elders of the people came and questioned Jesus' authority. But Jesus challenged them back, and when they could not defend their own authority, he in turn refused to explain himself. Instead, he continued to teach. He taught about loving one another and paying your taxes, and he told parables such as the parable of the tenants and the parable of the wedding banquet. These parables were about his own death and second coming. Later in the day, Jesus was anointed by a woman with a jar of expensive perfume, He said that she did this to prepare him for his burial. Wednesday came, the day before the beginning of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread called the Passover. The Sanhedrin were searching for some way to get rid of Jesus, for they were afraid of his growing influence with the people. It was on this day that Jesus was betrayed. Luke 22 says, Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. And Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. He consented and watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when no crowd was present. It was now Thursday, the first day of the Passover. Before the evening meal, Jesus took the twelve up to the upper room of a man in the city to celebrate the Passover. Here when Jesus, it was here when Jesus revealed Judas as one who was going to betray him. This was also the place where Jesus gave to his disciples the Last Supper. He did this when he took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he said to them, drink from it, all of you, for this is the the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. So at this time, we're going to be taking communion, but we're going to be doing it a little differently as today is Good Friday. We ask you to remain seated, and we will bring it to you. But we ask that you hold it, and we will partake in the elements together.
This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you so that your sins could be forgiven. Take and drink. After the supper, Jesus took the disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane. He took Peter, James, and John a bit further, asking them to stay back and watch while he went away, went away alone to pray. Jesus' suffering began that night while he was praying in Gethsemane. The sweating of blood, called hermatidrosis, is a rare occurrence when tiny blood capillaries in the sweat glands rupture, causing blood to ooze through the skin like sweat due to extreme physical or emotional stress. Jesus was greatly stressed because of his coming torture and death, but prayed that he be glorified and that God's will be accomplished. He also prayed for his disciples and for the world, that it might be sanctified by God's truth. Luke 22 says, And being in agony, he was praying very fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down upon the ground. Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane that night. John 18 says, When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden, and he and his disciples went, in, went into it. Now Judas, who, prayed, who betrayed him, knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said, and Judas the traitor was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him.
It was now late on Thursday night. What follows takes us into the early hours of Friday, Good Friday, the day Jesus died. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to see the high priest Caiaphas, along with the teachers of the law and the elders. Peter followed them at a distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priest, and sat down with the guards to watch the outcome. It was during this time that Peter denied Jesus three separate times. The Sanhedrin was looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. Though many false witnesses came forward, they did not find anything to condemn Jesus with. It was here when Jesus was struck by a soldier where Jesus was questioned by the high priest. John 18 says, And when he had said this, one of the officers standing by gave Jesus a blow, saying, Is that the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, if I have spoken wrongly, bear witness of the wrong. But if rightly, why do you strike me? Jesus was then blindfolded and beaten so badly he could hardly be recognized. At no point did he try to defend himself. Mark 14 says, Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists, and said, Prophecy, and the guards took him and beat him. Although they had already determined Jesus would die, the Sanhedrin still lacked proof needed to have him killed. So they then took him to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, so that he might find Jesus guilty of treason against the Roman authorities for failing to pay taxes to Caesar and for claiming to be a king. However, after speaking with Jesus, Pontius Pilate found Jesus to be innocent. Because it was time for the tradition of releasing one of the Jewish prisoners back to the Jewish people, Pilate then asked the Jews who they wanted to be set free. The Jews gathered there wanted the notorious murderer Barabbas to be set free and for Jesus to be crucified. Luke 23 says, For the third time Pilate spoke to them, Why, what crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. But with loud shouts, they insistently demanded that he be crucified, and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked for, and, and surrendered Jesus to their will.
Jesus was then stripped of his clothing and last with a scourge, a whip of leather straps embedded with metal and glass fragments. When this whip was brought down with full force, it tore skin, exposed muscle, and perhaps even exposed Jesus' very bones. By this time, Jesus was in great pain, suffering severe blood loss, and was becoming very weak and thirsty. Only after all this was he taken to be crucified. Next, they put a crown of thorns on his head. These thorns were pressed deep into his scalp and skull, causing further bleeding and great pain. Matthew 27 says, And after weaving a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and a reed in his right hand. And they kneeled down before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They then put a scarlet robe on him. This robe stuck to the wounds on Jesus' back, and when they ripped it off him, it would have been very painful and caused even more bleeding. Jesus was mocked and beaten another time before finally being led away. Matthew 27 continues, And they spat on him, and took the reed and began to beat him on the head. And after they had mocked him, they took his robe off and put his garments on him and led him away to crucify him.
church seem crucified crucified laid behind the stone you led to die rejected and alone like a rose trampled on the ground you took the Jesus would have been very weak by this time and could not bear the weight even of the crossbar that he was carrying, which likely only weighed 50 to 75 pounds. So another person was drafted to carry the crossbar for him. Matthew 27 says, And as they were coming out, they found a man of Cyrene named Simon, whom they pressed into service to bear his cross. Jesus was led away to the nearby hill of Golgotha and finally was nailed to the cross. The nails used were usually about six to eight inches long, causing severed nerves, terrible pain, and paralysis. A person being crucified was normally first laid down upon the crossbeam. A nail was then driven into one wrist, then the other hand was pulled very tightly on the other side of the beam before a second nail was driven into this wrist. Next, Jesus had his feet nailed to the cross. In order to do this, the victim's knees were bent and the feet brought up to lie flat against the stake so that they could be nailed into place. Once suspended, the victim's body weight often dislocated the shoulders and elbows, pulling joints from their sockets and ripping ligaments.
The way that Jesus was put on the cross also made it hard to breathe. This position, with arms outstretched, expanded Jesus' lungs and forced him to heave himself up to take every breath. In this state, the body eventually becomes totally exhausted, and the person either suffocates because they cannot rise up to breathe, or their heart ruptures. Even in the midst of this agony, Jesus thinks of those who put him on the cross by saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. He also blessed one of the criminals hanging there beside him. Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Those nearby cast lots for his clothes. One of the soldiers also stabbed him in the side. Before he died, Jesus became thirsty, likely thanks to blood loss, and asked for one last drink. John 19 says, After this, Jesus, knowing that all things had already been accomplished, to fulfill the scripture, said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine upon a branch of hyssop and brought it up to his mouth. Therefore, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. What was finished? His life, his work, his sacrifice. He came to die to take away the sins of the world. It could only be done by him and him alone. He came to die to take away the sins of the world. This is where and when it happened. You know, there was a song that I was talking to someone about this week that is entitled, Were You There? And there's some lines in the verses, there are some lines in the verses that go like this. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they pierced him in his side? Were you there when the sun refused to to shine? Were you there? Well, If you're like me, and most of you here are, you were born in the 20th century. That is 20 20 centuries too late. You weren't there physically, in person. So was the author of the song there when he wrote the song? No, not at all. So what is the song asking? Is it really asking if you were there when Jesus died on the cross? Well, not exactly. So what then is the song asking? Well, it's not really asking a question at all. It's asking you to remember. 
Good Friday is about remembering. Remembering that the suffering that Jesus went through on your behalf. The song is asking us to remember as if we were there, seeing the suffering and the pain for ourselves. So why is it crucial to remember? Why is it crucial to remember Good Friday and the pain and the suffering that Jesus went through? Well, there are two reasons. The first is that Jesus went to the cross because of you. Well, how is that? Well, it was your sin that sent him there. He died for the sins of the world. He died for the sins of the world so that the world could be saved through him once and for all and for all time. It was as if you were there. It was as if you mocked him with your words. It was as if you blasphemed him in your thoughts. It was as if you hanged him by your actions. But Jesus also went to the cross for us. You see, you were on Jesus' mind. And you were on his mind in his thoughts as he hanged there on the cross. A second ago, we sang above all. And the chorus says, crucified, laid behind a stone. You lived and died rejected and alone. Like a cross, like a rose, trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me above all. So you were on his mind, but also you were forgiven by his words. We just read a second ago that when Jesus was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. That wasn't just for those who placed him on the cross. That wasn't just for those who were standing watching Jesus be crucified. It wasn't, the, it wasn't just for the soldiers who led Jesus to the cross. But Jesus said those words, Father, forgive them for they do not what they're doing for us. He said those words for us. Jesus said those words that we might be forgiven. And lastly, we were redeemed by his actions. Galatians 3 says Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. So, were you there? In reality, no. But it doesn't change the facts. Jesus came and died for you. He came and paid the penalty of your sins and the sins of the world. We remember this day, Good Friday, not because it was necessarily a good day for Jesus, but the good that came from it. 
For in Jesus' death, we were no longer going to suffer the death that we deserved, but because Jesus suffered that penalty for us. It was through his stripes that we are healed. It was through the suffering that we heard about tonight that made it possible for us to be restored in our relationship with God. And so, we remember. We remember this day. And we celebrate this day not because it was a good day, but because of the days that were to come and are still coming as we are able to have eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus died a horrible death. He died this horrible death for you. He suffered all of this for you. And yes, the, theoretically, Jesus could have stopped the suffering at any time. He was God, wasn't he? But he didn't. He suffered and died for you. He did this because he loves you. He did this so that you would not have to suffer a spiritual death and live separated from him forever. But because he did this, we have an opportunity to live in heaven. Because our sins, our transgressions, our wrongdoings were paid for by the suffering and death of Jesus. Jesus calls on us to believe in him and what he has done for us. And so the question we now have is, do we believe in Jesus? Do we believe that what he did was enough? Believe in who Jesus is as the Savior of the world and what he accomplished for us as he suffered and died during this Passion Week. For it is through his death that we are given life. As we reflect on this day of so many years ago, we also think of the day that was to come, the Sunday that followed. And usually at the end of our, our service, we have a benediction. But tonight, we're not going to have a benediction. Why? Because good, the story of Jesus doesn't end on Good Friday. The story of Jesus continues. And so we don't leave the service ending our service. But instead, our, story, our service is to be continued. The story of Jesus didn't end at Good Friday. And praise the Lord. And because Jesus' story didn't end, guess what? Our story doesn't have an end either. For in Jesus, as he, well, I'm giving a little preview for Sunday. Just as Jesus was raised from the dead, what happens? We're able to live forever as well. But God's story, Jesus' story, doesn't end at Good Friday. It doesn't end at Easter. God's story continues today. And so as we conclude our service today, we're going to be singing part of a song. We can't sing the whole song because why? The song continues. And we'll sing the rest of the song on Sunday. And so we, we ask you to stand and let us sing together. Our next song, and then we ask you to go quietly and reflect upon the story of his suffering and his pain.
Sunday is coming. 